In a recent video, I showed you how you could use the async pipe to automatically subscribe to and pull out some data from a stream and dynamically display a loading template whilst waiting for that stream to emit. So I'll link to that full video if you want to check it out, but this is the basic idea. We have a stream that will emit some data after two seconds in this example, and we use the async pipe in the template to subscribe to that. And until this stream emits a value, it's going to trigger this else condition, which will cause this ng template to display. So you can see what this looks like. If I refresh the application, you can see that the loading template displays for two seconds. We get that animated skeleton text showing. And then once that stream does emit a value, we switch to displaying this part of the template with that value. It's a clean, simple and reactive way to handle a common scenario. But what I didn't tell you about in that last video was my devious plot to cover up the ugly truth of error handling with async pipes. Or maybe that's just a slight exaggeration of what one polite commenter pointed out in the last video. So there are a lot of different strategies you could take for handling errors with RxJS streams and the async pipe, but I'm going to show you a simple and clean method you can use to handle errors from the async pipe in a reactive way. Or at least it isn't any worse than handling errors in other ways. Uh, dealing with errors and communicating that to the user is never exactly a fun and easy task. So we've already seen the success case for this. So now let's take a look at what happens when the stream errors. So what I've done is I've set up this service here with a few different methods. And so the first just emits the value on the stream after a delay of two seconds. So that's what we've seen already. This second method is going to do kind of the same thing. It's going to wait two seconds, but then we are going to throw an error. And then this last method is a little bit more complex. What it's going to do is emit multiple values on the stream over time. And these first two values are going to emit fine, but we've set up this special little condition here so that when this value is sent on the stream, it's going to trigger an error. So let's go back to our example now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change this to use the error method instead. So what we'll see happen now is if we refresh this, we're going to still see that loading template, but the stream is going to error. So we're just going to indefinitely continue to see this loading. So what's happening here is that because our stream is erroring, this ng if is never going to evaluate to true. So our loading template is always going to display. So now let's take a look at how we can deal with this. So the general idea of what we want to do is create a separate stream to deal with errors and then utilize that in our template as well. So if a stream errors, it is destroyed. But what we want to do is create an error stream that emits a value when it errors. So to do this, we can use the catch error operator, which will catch when the stream errors and it will allow us to provide a replacement observable stream to subscribe to instead. So our original stream is still destroyed, but we will be able to successfully subscribe to this user error observable because we are going to replace the destroyed stream when an error occurs with a new stream. And we do this by using the of creation operator to create an observable of the error value. And then we can then utilize that value in our template to display the actual error to the user. So you can see that we are now checking for this error stream in our template and we're subscribing to it with the async pipe. And if this stream emits, we display that error. The problem we have though, is that this isn't just going to emit errors. It will also emit all the normal values of the stream. Since we are essentially subscribing to the normal user stream and we're just piping some additional operators onto it, we're also going to get the normal values like Josh and Greg from this stream. So that is why we also have the ignore elements operator piped on here as well. And this is going to ignore all values except errors and completion. So what this does for us is it creates a new stream that will only emit when it detects an error from this stream. So if we take a look at what is going on in the app here, we can see that it works fine, but we still have our loading template showing all of the time. And this may or may not be desirable depending on your design. But as I mentioned before, since we have 
this ng if and the observable stream is being destroyed, this is never evaluating to true. And so our loading template just continues to show. It doesn't really matter if this uh, additional user error stream that we've created is showing or not. So let's do something to fix that now. Okay, so we're still using the same stuff in the class here. But now in the template, I'm going to be making use of the user error stream in multiple places. So to avoid having to use the async pipe multiple times to subscribe to that stream multiple times, I've defined the entire view model inside of this ng container, which wraps our template. So this just allows us to subscribe to everything once, and then we are going to be able to use those values inside of this template here. And we need this ng if in order to set up these values with the async pipe, but the if functionality isn't really relevant here. We are just assigning an object to this. So this is always going to be truthy and this is always going to display. And technically you don't need to do this step. You could just use the async pipe multiple times on the same stream, but it's not really ideal. So what we've done now is add this additional check down here inside of this loading template. And basically we're just not going to show it if the user error stream has emitted. So again, if we take a look at our application again, if I refresh this, we'll be able to see that loading animation but when we get that error, our loading template disappears now. So this is all working quite nicely now, but let's see how it deals with our temporal values. That is the values that are emitted over time. So let's just change this here to use that instead. We'll save that and just take a look at what happens. So we get that loading template initially. Now we're gonna get our values cycling through, but then when we hit that error value, we get the error message displaying. So this works, but it's a little bit awkward because we have the last successful value still showing. And for the user value that failed, we just display this error and keep the old data there. Now, again, this might be something you want depending on what exactly your design is. But if we wanted to fix that, we could just come in here and add in uh, an additional uh, ng if check. So we'll just check that there has been no error and then we just keep our normal user check there as well. So we'll save that. And now again, we see that initial loading, we get Josh, we get Greg, but when we get that error value, we see the error message, but the actual user container is gone. And remember that when a stream errors, it is destroyed. So we won't continue to get the remaining values in this stream once we trigger that error. And that's it. We now have a nice way to deal with errors with streams and the async pipe in a reactive way. Again, this is going to be highly context dependent, but likely in a real world scenario, you would abstract some of the stuff going on in the template here out into separate presentational components. Okay, I hope you like this video. If you feel like subscribing, it helps out the channel a lot and I will catch you in the next video.